I'm excited to welcome Aaron Galvin, CEO and founder of Luxury Living Chicago Realty to take over. Aaron has been at the forefront of the luxury Chicago apartment market for nearly 20 years. He's become the go-to expert on all things luxury multifamily in Chicago. I'm not kidding, this guy has a crystal ball. With all of the tech we've built to track all of the data, somehow we still can do a blind test with Aaron and he's always spot on. And I'm like, that's not a script. That's not, the, no joke. We play this game on a regular basis. So having worked with Aaron for five years or so, I can tell you, Aaron is a true visionary. Everything from boardroom presentations to late night strategy pizza sessions. It's easy to see why his passion, enthusiasm, and leadership is so infectious. And how luxury living Chicago Realty has become the company it is today. Ladies, gentlemen, Aaron Galvin. Wow. Thank you, Chris. That was, that was awesome. You've been such an incredible ambassador for my vision and we're so grateful for your contribution to this company and, and to the industry at large. Um, as you can see from the many, many faces that are on this screen, uh, there's a real interest in what's happening in the Chicago luxury apartment market. But what's important to note is not only the number of people who, is here, who are here, which is now up to 255, um, but who's here today. And to all on this call, I really wanna take a moment to express my sincere gratitude for your contributions to the Chicago multifamily community. So first, I see a lot of my clients and partners you are the ones responsible for envisioning, designing, building, financing, and ultimately delivering so many of the beautiful apartment buildings that grace our skyline and fill our neighborhoods. There have been over 25,000 new luxury apartments delivered in the last eight years. So much blood, sweat, and tears goes into making a back of a napkin idea into a reality. So thank you for all that you do. To my industry colleagues, property managers, real estate agents, investment sale brokers, and leasing agents, you are the frontline workers of this industry. You are the people who find creative and innovative ways to market, lease, manage, and sell these luxury apartment buildings. A special shout out to everybody who masked up and kept the train running last year and always providing exceptional service for our renters and clients. To the renters and buyers who've joined us today, our brokerage clients, Thank you for entrusting LLCR with your home search. Finding a new home is not an easy process. It's likely the most financially significant decision in your life. It's where memories are made and the dream of living downtown Chicago is realized. We thank you for trusting us with your home selection. And to the many family, friends, and supporters of LLCR, we could not do this without you. Thank you for your continued understanding of what it takes for us to provide the highest level of service. And finally, to my LLCR team. There are over 35 LLCR team members on this call today. I continue to be humbled by your commitment and I'm so thankful for the opportunity to both lead and learn from you. Together, we make this happen. So as I think about this audience and the key message today, I wanna to focus on community, this community. The pandemic has brought us together in a unique way. Whether you're a developer, industry colleague, renter, or anyone else, We've all experienced similar feelings of fear, uncertainty, confusion, and now hope as we live through a pandemic. As we move forward, it's going to take listening, empathy, respect, courage, grit, and continued patience to restore the downtown luxury apartment market to prominence. And I'm going to share with you today how we're going to do it. But first, I'm gonna tell you a quick story that took place in the summer of 1992. As many of you know, I'm originally from Shaker Heights, a suburb of Cleveland, Ohio. Say what you will about Cleveland sports teams, but it was a great place to grow up, not unlike the suburbs of Chicago. As a 12 year old boy, I remember visiting Chicago for the first time. It was one of the first trips after my parents' divorce and something I was very much looking forward to. We were staying at the Weston Hotel on Michigan Avenue with a view of Water Tower Place. I remember reading the Fodor's travel guide so I would be best prepared. 
For those on this call who don't know what Fodor's is, it was what you read to research a city before there was an internet. Even as a kid, preparation was something very important for me. I'll never forget that first turn up Lakeshore Drive from the south and seeing the glistening lake to the right, the high rise buildings to the left. It was everything a summer day in Chicago can be. And it was pure magic for 12 year old Aaron. I remember going to Chicago Chop House for the biggest steak dinner, Gino's East for deep dish pizza and catching a White Sox game against the, Cle the visiting Cleveland Indians. I also remember shopping on Michigan Avenue and Oak Street because that's where my dad wanted to buy a new suit for my bar mitzvah that was happening the following year. And I even remember that yellow, a yellow puzzle piece necktie the store owner gave me for being so patient. It was one of my first lessons in the value of extraordinary customer service. And while I can't say in that moment, I knew I'd move to Chicago two weeks after graduating from Miami of Ohio, start dating my future wife at 22 years old, live in six different luxury apartments in Lincoln Park, the Gold Coast and River North, and at the age of 27, start a business that would eventually lease over 15,000 apartments and employ over 50 people. There is no doubt that that trip, that moment, that experience contributed to the love and passion I have for this great city. So why is this story relevant to our conversation today? It's relevant because over the last year, downtown Chicago has been under siege. First, it was the deafening silence of a stay at home order, leaving the city desolate just as the snow was starting to melt and the excitement of spring was upon us. Then it was the eye-opening protests, bringing light to systemic racism, a watershed moment not only in Chicago, but in our entire country. Unfortunately, many of those peaceful protests turned into looting, ransacking, and destruction. Watching that same very Michigan Avenue, River North, and Gold Coast that I first saw as a 12-year-old boy, lived in during my formative years, and many of us on this call depend on for our careers and livelihoods was devastating. People nationwide were questioning if downtown living could survive such tumultuous disruption. And all of this created a perfect storm for unprecedented rent drops. Starting in July, we saw a significant decrease in rents and occupancy in our industry, the likes of us, likes many of us never thought possible. We were paralyzed, scared, confused, and uncertain at what could come from this moment of reckoning. There certainly weren't many 12-year-old kids coming to Chicago this summer creating positive memories. For all intents and purposes, sentiment was that Chicago may never recover. Well, I am here to tell you unequivocally and with resounding confidence that Chicago, and more importantly, the downtown luxury apartment market is already rebounding. And with a collective effort from this community, we can be stronger than ever. So let's talk about some data and let's start with macro trends. In looking at this macro trends to better understand how luxury products and services perform as compared to a more standard product coming out of a recession. The chart you see on your screen shows a comparison of the S&P Global Luxury Goods Index on the green line and the S&P 500 on the black line. To provide context, the Luxury Goods Index includes the top 80 publicly traded luxury goods companies. This includes Tesla, Nike, Louis Vuitton and Estee Lauder, for example. The, the S&P 500 includes companies such as Amazon, Bank of America, Coca-Cola, Facebook. These are all great companies, but definitely a cachet to the companies in the luxury index. As you can see, the luxury trend line increased exponentially coming out of the last recession from 2009 to 2012. Also important to note, the spread between these two indices has grown exponentially. Luxury goods have a history of rebounding faster than the general market. If history is any indication, luxury products are in for a fun ride over the next three to five years, and luxury rentals are no exception. So bringing this a little closer to home, this chart shows a similar comparison in the Chicago Class A apartment market. The black line shows the average gross price per square foot 
for the entire Class A market since 2013 on a quarterly basis. The gray line shows the average gross per square foot for the top 10 highest price rental properties during that same period of time. Similar to the macro luxury goods market we just discussed, the spread between the top 10 luxury properties and the larger Class A data set has been growing over time. For example, in Q1 2013, the spread between these two data sets was only 35 cents or 13%. But looking at Q3 2020, the spread grew to 86 cents, which is the equivalent of a 30% premium. This is the largest spread we've seen in eight years. So while the market decreased overall, luxury properties fared much better than even the standard Class A. Taking this a step further, in looking at the dotted trend line, this shows the top three highest priced rental properties. This is what we refer to as the ultra luxury rental set. You can see the spread grows even wider and those properties performed even better during the pandemic. In fact, the top three properties were still at 417 per square foot in Q3 2020 on a gross basis, when the overall Class A market dropped to 289 per square foot. That's a 42% premium for those properties as compared to the average Class A rental. Here's the big takeaway. Renters will pay for the best of the best. And even in a pandemic, this held true. So as we advise future developers on what to build moving forward, we are most bullish on the ultra luxury rental market. In fact, I project this spread to continue to grow over the next few years. There is minimal supply coming to downtown Chicago and those who are able to secure financing and take the risk are going to win. In fact, by 2023, I would not be surprised to see the newest properties delivering at or above pre-pandemic levels. And by 2024, we will see a 450 plus per square foot building. This market is coming back strong. A special thank you to Ron DeVries and Gail Listner from Integra Realty Resources, IRR, for sharing some of this historical data. It's truly a testament to your collaborative spirit. So let's talk about what's happening right now and why I have so much optimism for recovery. This chart shows the net rent in our exclusive portfolio for the first two months of 2021. This is the rent price that people are paying after concessions or any free rent. This data is hot off the presses and is week by week data for the first two months of the year. As a benchmark goal, we set our initial target at $2,500 net. When we have a week where within our portfolio, the average net rent is back to 2,500. That will be a huge win. The first thing to note, and it's not even on the chart, is actual leasing velocity. In only 60 days, we have leased 550 units. To put that in perspective, in January and February last year, we leased 284 units, and the market was very strong. This was before the pandemic. This is a 93% increase this year. The chart shows a low of 1858 in the first week of the year. Since that time, we have increased net rents a cumulative 24% with last week at $2,328 average. For renters, the time is now to lease an apartment because rents are going up quickly. For all others, this is such a welcome departure from the last six months and provides every opportunity to incrementally increase rent prices for the next 90 to 120 days as the spring leasing season really kicks into high gear. So now that we've established historical evidence of increasing rents in the current market, the question I get asked most often is who is renting these luxury apartments? And with significant rent decreases in the last six months of 2020, has the demographic shifted the socioeconomic composition of these properties? On paper, the answer is no. Credit worthiness, income levels, previous residents, and even the percentage of people relocating to Chicago has remained unchanged in our data from 2019 to 2020. This lack of variance is a great thing and speaks to the long-term stability of our renter base. For the most part, these are renters who maintained employment through the pandemic were able to work remotely 
and are most likely to have increased compensation and disposable income as the economy recovers. These are the qualified renters we have always had in these properties. However, there's one dynamic that has materially changed, and that's the number of new renters living in each building. Because of the increased vacancy in so many of our properties and subsequent rent decreases, there are simply more newly moved in renters in nearly all of our properties right now. These people are moving from the neighborhoods, suburbs, out of state. They also move from other properties downtown. Regardless, these people rented during the pandemic and are much more accepting of the current constraints such as amenities on a reservation system and longer wait time for elevators. These new renters are gold because they're excited about living in your properties. And we need to keep them with the same warm and fuzzy feeling they have right now. This will certainly help create harmony today as we continue to navigate this pandemic, but the care, compassion, and collaboration we put in now will have a material impact on retention efforts in the future. So as you can see, there's a clear path towards success and recovery. At LLCR, we promise to do our part in helping fuel this recovery. This conference is that first step. What comes next to continue the momentum in creating an aligned community? Every day we are providing more sophisticated and strategic market intelligence for our partners. Our developers are going to continue to have the benefit of our relationship. This includes extraordinary amounts of data and strategy to help navigate this constantly evolving landscape. Our exclusive leasing portfolio consists of various types of class A properties from the newest, most upscale lease ups to stabilized properties and even condo deconversions. In addition, we are currently consulting for a number of developments on the verge of securing financing for future skyline changing ultra luxury multifamily in Chicago. There is nothing more important than providing the highest level of service for our clients and this community. Market intelligence is the key. Further, we are now in the process of rolling out new products focused on renter feedback, reputation management, and mobile first technology to ensure the renter experience continues to improve. Stay tuned for more from LLCR as we work to provide even more for this community and our clients. Thank you again for your time, engagement, and support of this company and the downtown luxury Chicago apartment market. Hopefully this talk has provided context for my optimism and instilled a stronger sense of community as we think about all parties involved. We are all humans coexisting and feeding off of each other's energies. Let's honor that as we navigate the return to prominence for the Chicago luxury apartment market. Thank you.